moving on ahead, we have a very exciting fireside chat coming up for you. We're talking about digital transformation to India's banking system. Very relevant, very pertinent in the <laughs> day and age. Please allow me to welcome two gentlemen who are amidst us, representing the diversity on our panel, on our conference, <laughs> as always. <laughs> Welcoming Sudhakar, Mr. Sudhakar Kaza, the managing director, retired managing director of RBI Note Mudran, and Mr. K.S. Ravi Shankar, the business transformation consultant, men who represent over four decades of experience in their respective fields, plethora of knowledge and wisdom coming up for you through this interesting conversation as we take a deep dive into the transformation of India's banking systems. Over to you, gentlemen. Thank you, Mansi. Uh, good day to viewers across the world watching on uh, social media and those attendees uh, who are on this platform. I'm saying good day because it's different parts of time at different parts of the world. Uh, welcome. Uh, this is hosted in Bangalore. So namaskara, namaste to all of you. I want to introduce now a gentleman who personifies not only the intent, but also the ability to drive change over 30 years as a central banker of repute who brought technology to India. And I want to hear from him, how did this metamorphosis happen and where are we today? What is of importance on this session is that banking and technology has touched the lives of billions of people never more than in India in the last few decades. And in front of you is this gentleman called Sudhakar Kaza, who, who was one of the harbingers of change. I call him Kaza, I know him for 35 years. We have both journeyed on the same path of bringing technology to the people in the banking sector. And uh, he has held my hands many a time. Uh, it's lovely welcoming you out here in this forum. You are no stranger to WEF. Uh, you, you were asked by the ladies who had heard you last time. Uh, therefore, we had to reach out and I didn't take no for an answer. So under duress, this gentleman is uh, uh, accepted, but I think he's glad he is coming. What a lovely forum and what a lovely day to start something very positive about what has happened and what is the future for society, for India, for the world. Thank you. Namaste to all the attendees all around the world. It's a great pleasure to be on this uh, forum. Uh, Ravi, it's a pleasure to meet uh, good friends for four decades uh, uh, here at this uh, rather gloomy times. But we have moved along uh, together, you know, when from classy uh, class banking uh, to Bank, banks coming into a mobile and very poor people on the roadside are also doing their banking transactions in a mobile. So this was indeed a very, very, very long journey and it represents a very wide canvas and this has been done. Uh, a lot of people, hundreds and hundreds and thousands of people like you and me on different sides of the fence. And uh, I think we have moved from somewhere down behind other countries to perhaps being ahead of most countries in the world today. Thank you. Great opening statement. So once again, I'm saying Gaza is a rainmaker in the banking industry. And I'm using this word specifically because there is an anecdote which we shared a few days back. Uh, banking was frozen in India and I want him to tell in his own words. So why don't you tell what was banking until 1980s and then we will go on with something exciting. Well, the, you see, the banking started in India with the presidency banks in 1820s, all the three presidency banks. They started with all the big, big ledgers and nice handwritings and ink and all that. And believe it or not, till 1980, there was no change in banking except an hiding machine. There was nothing in there. So that's why when they wanted to speed up banking, there was never an attempt to reach it out to more people. How to improve banking within the bank itself? So the adding machines, they quietly replaced it with the uh, ledger posting machines and advanced ledger posting machines and all. And they called it a mechanization. 
and mechanization they have moved on to computerization but i would like you to uh, actually get to understand the canvas shankar you know uh, in 1947 when we started with hardly any literacy hardly anybody having bank accounts less than 5% now you are looking at a country which is 6.26 lakh villages continental size 1.4 billion people and hardly anybody with a bank account from that stage on we have moved now to where above 15 years of age 90% of people in india do have a bank account and this has been achieved largely by uh, uh, technology you know technology with people like you being on the other side making the impossible possible teaching in fact many bankers as to how to do banking the new way because uh, bankers were converting ledgers into uh, machines and this was not possible and i would also want you to understand the scale you know we have lakhs of atms now and you look at the uh, what are the electronic transactions which are taking place uh, nearly 3 billion transactions in a month though we want to do make it a billion a, a day so uh, this is the moment which has uh, happened but this is a moment which has happened move the banking from class banking of the rich people to the banking of the poor people and making poor enhance their lives and women have played a great role in that because most banking development in direct beneficiary beneficiary schemes of the government and all is the accounts of women which are actually credited because women bring a change to the family so this is the move which has happened from the big cities into the small villages in the hinterland 1.5 lakh bank branches 1 and 1/2 lakh uh, 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 post offices doing banking the postman being a banker and then uh, millions of people who are actually banking savers reaching out to the people fantastic i just want to take these big numbers and and showcase this to the world india has been known in the last 20 25 years for being a it uh, mega hub for its engineering skills and for the kind of skilled uh, skills that it brings across these new economy sectors what has gone quietly unnoticed and i am fast forwarding this that in the last decade or a bit more india has achieved the impossible and it is i think it is a window to the world it is fog lights enough in a in a dark area india has more than 1.1 billion uh, bank accounts which are out there a country which as uh, kaza said 25 years back uh, was was nowhere in the picture as a banking economy today has 1.1 billion bank accounts Uh, is that the right figure i think we we keep looking at rbi statistics no you you miss you missed it by a big number uh, actually the number of bank accounts now is 1571 million that so is the, that, that 1.5 billion that is 1.5 billion more than the population of course yeah yeah more than one account but it goes to show the penetration so i am going to move uh, forward as to talking with Gaza, the man who made many of these changes possible, as to what are the four or three milestones uh, that has created this dramatic change in India and many parts of the world, whether it is developing countries in Southeast Asia, Africa, or whether it is uh, Europe, or whether it has been the Americas, the South, South, South Americas, a lot of. inputs has gone from the in indian banking's digitalization and the technology adoption because this has meant value to the poorest of the poor to those who are unbanked to people who are not for part of a formal sector and india as a largely agrarian industry cul culture which moved into an economy which is more services oriented it is the banks that have played this role and in india the central bank has played a pivotal role and a gentleman like kaza and a couple of others like that made this change of a bureaucratic organization into a technology leading the country uh, so 
Ravi, I'll be, a, I'll be a bit quick because I can see the time clicking on there. We still uh, have been told we have 12 minutes. So you uh, can okay, uh, okay. give the world a chance to hear the successes. Of yeah, yeah, okay. You know, you know, initially India wanted to uh, climb the ladder, the steps one by one. Uh, so we started a, the, we, we started yeah. the MICR clearing project in which you were involved uh, in 1982, 83, and it became live in 86. It was a good 25 years after United States. Then we, we started to go move to the bank uh, branch computerization and all that. But a big change happened in India in 1991, you know, when Mr. Dasmarao became the prime minister. At that time, you know, the banks, new banks were licensed in 1994. And then new banks came with what is called as a core banking solution. A core banking solution, you know, change the concept of a bank. You no longer have one branch, you actually bank with a bank. And that start, spurred the Indian public sector huge behemoth into some kind of a technology competition with very lean and mean uh, small banks. So having moved to, to that level, we, we started and then we, we started on a host of payment system projects well, like the electronic clearing service, the electronic funds transfer, the next electronic clearing service. And, in, and we started the national financial switch, which means any bank's uh, card will get money out of any ATM. Then we, we started the most modern real-time gross settlement system in the world and the most secure. We built upon everything. This was a landmark thing in the sense that we decided not to climb the steps one by one. We took a fast elevator. From then on, we decided to lead the world. And lead the world, we did. It started with the National Electronic Fund Transfer. You know, almost 100,000 bank branches were linked. Money from one place to another place with no payment of cost, you know, it just reaches the other end and almost immediately. We had every half an hour, one hour settlements and things like that. Then uh, another milestone is the formation of the National Payments Corporation of India. They came up with really extraordinary products like, you know, IMPS, Unified Payment uh, uh, Interface, and then USSD. Uh, these kind of products, what they did is they got linked into the new mobile revolution. The mobiles were increasing. The mobiles were increasing on to, you know, you had a lot of smartphones and all that. And this became apps on the smartphones and the apps on the smartphones linked to the platforms of Reserve Bank of India and reached every bank account. Now that's where the government stepped in. You know, although 2006, 2007, we started the financial inclusion, including the disadvantaged and others into the uh, uh, financial services, from 2014 onwards, it was really fast forward, rapid. And in one year flat, 250 million accounts were added by 2000, mid 2015. And by 2019, believe it or not, 450 million accounts were added to, to such an extent that in, in you know, uh, they say that, you know, 20% in some developed economies, 20% uh, of the people are unbanked here. Nine out of ten people out of every uh, every person over fifteen is uh, is banking, and you see people banking. You know, poor people banking on the roadside using these apps, and even the maids in the house tell, "Okay, sir, you please send it through uh, NEFT. You please send it through the bank app." So this was the uh, tremendous moment, and when the migrants and all had to be created money by the state governments, wherever they are moving, you know, they get an SMS into their account. Yes, the money has come into the account. Where women Brilliant. come into the picture is, women come into the picture is, many of the social changes that the government wants to implement, they credit women. Because crediting a woman means crediting the family, bringing money to the family. And I'm not speaking against men, I don't want to be beaten up outside. But the fact of the matter is, this has been proven in India that women have to be credited money and women have been taught banking and out of this 450 million many of the women, money being credited i can assure you more money goes to the women than to the men so this particular movement has happened in this country you know we call it as jam you know jandhan that is the money jandhan money of the people in the bank accounts aadhar is our identity this thing and mobile 1 billion mobiles so the next so, step would be connected to the future phones. So uh, I uh, lovely, interesting anecdotes. And this man has been part of this. It's a privilege for me to do this. But you know, these are all great stuff. Everybody appreciates 
what do you appreciate what was your habit you know i i want i want to understand i know you very well yet i don't bankers are inscrutable okay 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 i got i got your point you know the happy was <laughs> the happiness part of it you are talking about a project which made me happy okay i will tell you this was a very important project when i joined the banking i laid my eyes on a project i knew if i don't do this project i'll be unhappy all through my life i did not sleep many nights because if i fail in the project i am nowhere the project has good dividends and this was the project i married in 1985 and i am happy ever since ravi because you said happiness not the toughest project not the project which reached the maximum number of people project which made me happy was the marrying the woman i love please understand and that is a very successful banker in her own rights by my best wishes to uh, to viji thank you mansi thank you viewers across the globe i hope you had a energetic session two men talking in a forum with some of the loveliest women before preceding and later women of substance thank you so much and have a good thank day thank you so much thank you so much ravi thank you mr kaza for that illuminating conversation and really putting into perspective through the figures the you know reflecting the potentiality of india and thank you for the work that you've done and on that note we'd like to honor you with a small token of our affection on behalf of the all ladies league mr kaza we'd like to present to you this title of the leader of the decade in banking and finance on behalf of the all ladies league at the women economic forum in bangalore it's an honor to present this virtual award to you Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. And in the same breath, we'd also like to present the award to Ravi Shankar as well for his phenomenal contribution in the field of entrepreneurship and business transformation. Please accept this award on our behalf Thank as you. we honor you as a leader of the decade in entrepreneurship and business transformation. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The gentlemen, thank you for your presence. Thank you for your generosity of information sharing. Thank you. We're enlightened by your presence. Appreciate it. Thank you. With that